All right, guys, welcome back to the Franklin Forge. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. It is knife related, but it's not necessarily forging related. We have this old antique kitchen knife. Now I found this at an antique store for $13. If you're interested in knife making or just restoring things in general, um, you can find this stuff at antique stores all the time for really, really cheap. Like I said, $13 and I got this um, very crappy looking uh, chef's knife. It's got probably pine or oak or something on the handle, just something cheap. Clearly been resharpened about 4,000 times over the years and it's got this weird witch's nose um, shape to it. We're going to uh, re restore it. We're gonna refinish it. Someone has put some lacquer on it at some point. It may even been the antique store. So we're gonna get everything. We're gonna replace the handles. We're gonna reprofile it. We're gonna clean the sides of it and get this thing back up uh, to working order. Also, if you stick around to the end of the video, we're gonna give you some details on how you could potentially win this chef's knife once I get, it, I get it finished out. I like to think that someone was being crafty and made this out of a bandsaw. Let's start with taking the handles off and see what we're working with. So we got the handles uh, off there. Maybe the hacksaw would have been a better choice for this instead of drilling them out, but we got them out. It's very rusted underneath the handle, kind of broke because it was really thin by this pin. Um, it broke around the edges, it didn't break the blade. But we, like I said, we got everything out and so now we need to get some of that heavier rust off there. So I'm just gonna go over to my bench grinder with a wire wheel on it and we're gonna just wire wheel all that rust off there. We've got it uh, somewhat cleaned up. So let's talk about what we did and what we discovered. I used a 80 grit uh, disc sander to try and see if I can get some of that additional rust and flatten our handle scales a little bit. Uh, that seemed to help, so that's good to go. And then I switched over to an eight inch contact wheel on my uh, two by uh, 72 belt grinder. And I started with an A45 Trizac belt, equivalent to, I think, roughly 400 grit. And I ran it down this way to kind of mimic some uh, hand sanding uh, strokes on there. And that helped remove that lacquer and expose what the steel looked like underneath. Um, and then I switched over to a Scotch Bright, a blue Scotch Bright, which is about a 320, 400 grit as well. And that helped remove the remaining stuff off of there. So what I can see, and uh, as far as what changes about the direction we need to go on this, there's quite a bit of micro pitting on the surface here. I just don't wanna make it thinner than what it is. So we're gonna leave those micro pitting in there. We may even do a dark finish now to help blend all that in using some gun blue but we'll have to see when we get to the finish uh, side of it. So, so ideally, like when you have a chef's knife, you want, you want enough clearance on the back side that your knuckles don't hit it. Um, so even when I make a forge a chef's knife, I like a nice wide heel where this one is two and a half. That's exactly actually what I like to have mine at. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna grind this way um, on that heel any. We'll leave that heel where it's at, but we mainly wanna look at fixing this. There's no, um, flatness to it at all. So if you're trying to cut through something, nothing is making contact with the board. So you're never going to fully cut through something until you pull it through towards the tip um, because of how much of this is missing. I'm just come in, I'm just going to draw a line. So just like that. Um, and that's going to give us a better representation of where we need to go. So I think what we'll do is we'll grind this back first. And I may even add, so normally I'll do like this, um, kind of S curve on my blades for the heel. So we may even do that just to add a little bit of my touch in there. Um, Cause I don't usually like a hard stop here, 90 degree for a couple of reasons. One of those is being, it creates a stress riser. You have a hard stop right here. And anytime you have a, um, a hard uh, shoulder like that, 
it creates a stress riser, which can lead to a crack. That's not a concern with a chef's knife. Just aesthetically though, I like for my lines to flow in. And so you have this line here that flows in. So we kind of want to complement that line here and not have that hard stop. So yeah, like I said, first thing we're going to do is grind this. So one thing we want to be careful with is this thing is heat treated. So we can't just go all in and just grind this away or use an a, a, a angle grinder because what we can do is overheat the steel and remove our heat treat. So we gotta be careful and uh, keep it cool and run our grinder at a slower speed and then grind to this line. All right, so we've got our profile. Um, it is much better. I use that straight line that I drew as a reference. So the typically way I do it, this is gonna be your highest point on your chef's knife. There's different types of chef's knife. If I'm doing this kind of American uh, style, then I usually have this as my highest point and then taper and then roll up towards the tip. So that's kind of what I did here. This had a, a large drop. This is a shorter blade than what we started with. Uh, but not by a whole lot, but it got rid of that weird witch's nose and brought the tip up. So now when we put it on our table, we've got a nice flat heel so that it makes full contact and we can slice through our onions, our tomatoes and stuff like that. And then we've got a little rocking up towards the tip because then you can rock down cut or you can choke up on the blade and then you can use it uh, with a finer point. You can use it like a little uh, paring knife. So. I uh, also ended up putting that sweep in there, that S grind, that'll get more refined once the handles are on. I like to do that versus that hard stop. It's more comfortable on your hand. It's more functional in an engineering aspect because you don't have a stress riser right there. Um, and so it's aesthetically pleasing and it complements the curve here. So you can see how our lines flow much, much better. The sprayer sucks. All right, let's see what we got in our scrap bin. Maybe this one. Down it. Yeah, 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 we got the perfect piece. Piece of hybrid scale, some maple burl, and some resin. That'll look really, really good. Yeah, that's what we're gonna use. All right, we're ready to glue the handles up. First thing you wanna do here is make sure that this is clean. And so I use acetone. And so just dip a little piece of towel and some acetone over here and just make sure that we got, we sprayed it down with WD-40 earlier and just oils from your fingers and stuff. We just wanna make sure that we get that off there before, make sure we have a good surface for our um, epoxy to adhere to. Our scales are clean, we've got left and right. We've got our pins. Let's lay out some epoxy. I think this will be it for these bottles because they are out. Let's use a scrap piece of wood. It's gonna get thrown away anyways. And it lasts a while. No. It's a thin layer because what's not needed will get pushed out anyways. Yep, that looks good. It's gonna look good once it's more because it just looks ugly all right there we go now we just got to wait for it to set up a few moments later so our epoxy has uh, set up enough where that we can take the clamps off of it and we can start grinding uh, on the handle so the first thing we're gonna do is grind the profile and then we'll start sculpting the uh, the sides of it All right, so we've got our blade done. Um, I've just got to do a little bit of hand polishing here on the handle and get some of that um, rubbing compound off of there and just clean the blade up in general. 
and then we'll uh, put some wax on it. Some of my favorite stuff, uh, Wicked Wax. My buddy Fred Depreet, Depreet Forge, makes this stuff. It's it's a thicker compound of normal stuff that I've used, and I really like that because it sticks on the handle, and you can also let it dry on there, and it will, um, I'll put it on the blade as well, it will um, kind of dry up, and then you can actually do an additional uh, polish with a cloth and, and really add a little pop to your, to your blade. It's food safe, it's great for kitchen knives like this. So I hope you get any remaining polishing compound off of there. And that, guys, is done. Um, super happy with how this turned out. Um, it's cool to take something that, I don't know how old it is, but it was old, and you know, giving it new life, um, you know, repurposing it, fin uh, fixing the issues that it had, and kind of putting a modern twist on it in my own styling, uh, and definitely putting a modern style handle on it. I, I doubt back then they had something like this to put on there. So yeah, it turned out absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for following along on this video. It was a ton of fun to see where this thing started and what it uh, became. Taking a $13 antique store find and turning it into a $400 chef's knife. As I mentioned in the first of the video, we are going to be giving this knife away. We've already started entries on my Instagram page, at The Franklin Forge, and you can find the post on there, like that post, and follow me on Instagram. But you can get additional entries on this YouTube video by subscribing to my YouTube and commenting below why you think you should have this chef's knife. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.